guys, there's a lock that's been around here only about two weeks. This is from Gizmo Ray, and I've got a lot of hours uh, trying to pick on this thing. Take a look at the key. This was mummied, but I, after I got frustrated, I took a look at it. And you got some really wide variations in bidding, but that doesn't explain... Uh, that's not the only explanation. Uh, inside of the core itself, you'll notice we got some really interesting stuff going on here. First of all, we have uh, four threaded chambers. We have one tapered chamber here. I think that might have started out to be some counter milling, and then we have a true counter mill chamber on number six. So keep number six in mind because he is a particular devil. Um, inside of the Bible. This is where it really gets interesting. First of all, we have threaded in chamber number one, and then we flip it around here. We got threaded in chamber number five, and then this is something I've never seen before, and I, I hope you can make that out. We have actually try to get a light in there. We have some counter milling in chamber number six. I don't even know how Gizmo Ray did that, but uh, remember we had counter milling in chamber six on the Bible or on the core. We got counter milling in the Bible. And now we're going to take a close look at some of these pins and pay attention, particular attention to pin number six. Let me go ahead and zoom in here. All right, you guys have seen something like this earlier on Boris Kozo's lock. It's actually a telescoping pin. The key pin itself has been drilled. We get some Come on, baby, focus for me. There you go. So that little part of the T-pin fits down inside of there, so it makes it really difficult to figure out when you have basically two shear lines, and then you got the base part of the T to get caught up in the shear line. This is interesting as well. This is a tapered, serrated pin, so it makes you feel like you got a fault set, believing you got a, a spool, but in fact it's uh, serrated. Of course, that chamber also was serrated. Um, this was the tapered uh, it probably started out to be counter milled. We have some nasty cuts on here, but uh, in, inside of the core itself, chamber number two is threaded, so that would have caught up the sharp edges uh, on the driver pin right here. Chamber number three, uh, this was threaded in the core, but nothing in the Bible. Um, very sharp edges here to grab a hold of those uh, threads, very nasty. This is an interesting one because this is also a telescoping pin. It was in like this. So th this part of the removable segment is actually a smaller diameter than that one. So when this would get hung up, you'd actually be picking that part. That's what you'd feel uh, dragging or binding. As soon as you thought you got him picked, this little guy would fall out of the bottom and get stuck blocking the shear line. Really nasty, very ingenious. Um, on this one, we simply have a bunch of serrations, and then this is the one I ask you to pay attention to. Nothing special about this. It's a standard driver pin, and you really wouldn't think too much about this one. It's just a wafer, and then we have uh, a T, or very narrow part cut on that key pin. But if you remember, we had two counter milling. So as you start to pick this guy, this wafer would have gotten caught in that first counter milling on pin number six. And as soon as it does that, this innocent driver would then fall down and block, actually a spring would push him down to block the shear line. If you got forceful, and I don't know if I did or not, but if you got forceful and you actually shoved him even harder, this small wafer would then be pushed through the shear line and he would have gotten caught up in the counter milling of the Bible. And of course, when that happens, you have this little T-pin that would get caught in the shear line giving you a very extreme fault set. I don't recall that happening, but uh, it may have. I did get some minor fault sets on this thing. That's as far as I got on this innocent looking. By the way, it is, um, if you take a look at it, it uh, this is a Corbin uh, uh, keyway. It's a little bit, well, it's not a little bit. It's very hard to get up in there. So if you have some extreme bidding like you have on this key, if you have a very low cut one in the front of a very deep cut one, as of course we do here, it would be very, very difficult to reach around to pick a high cut pin hiding behind a low cut pin in this particular keyway. So a lot of thought went into this. And if that's not hard enough, Gizmo Ray also, come on, zoom out here, focus. He varied almost every single one of these springs. So it gives varying degrees of tension on all these pins. 
Great job, Gizmo Ray. Appreciate the opportunity. I have to declare failure. Again, this is one of those locks you could probably pick on the rest of your life, and unless you are very, very lucky, probably never get into it. Thanks, guys. Stay safe. Stay legal. Mark this one up as one more failure on Bosnia Bill's part. Thanks, guys.